Um, my name is Max, as, uh, as Herb mentioned, uh, and uh, I work for, for, for Amazon. I work for Alexa. I have uh, the privilege of, uh, of uh, uh, being uh, the Alexa evangelist in Europe. So um, what my job description is to speak about Alexa to anybody who wants to listen to anybody in Europe. That's pretty much my job description. So, and I love Alexa. And uh, um, as, as Herb mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm going to do things a little bit different here for, for once. Uh, I'm not going to speak only about uh, Alexa, the technology behind it, which, which I do love, but uh, I'm going to try to give you a perspective of the implication of that, that this technology is going to have on our lives and having right now. So, but first, uh, uh, I, was born, I was born there. This is Florence, Italy. Then uh, life took me in Florida. Uh, that's where I grew up uh, professionally most of the time. And then uh, um, I, I, uh, I changed uh, everything and I moved here. From Florida, I went to Luxembourg, kind of a big change, a packed uh, a wife, uh, uh, three kids, uh, uh, including a seven-month-old uh, uh, baby girl. And uh, we went to Luxembourg for Amazon because um, I was uh, uh, looking into making a change, uh, making a change into a place where I could uh, uh, innovate, where I could own uh, uh, part of a business, uh, where I could create things to delight customers. Because uh, the way I grew up, uh, I grew up reading a lot of this. This is one of the first books I read. Uh, this is from 1952, so I wasn't born back then. But uh, I was. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the one of the awesome books uh, uh, from Arthur Clarke. So I grew up reading sci-fi, and you can imagine that when I had the opportunity within Amazon uh, to change from Amazon Web Services into uh, Alexa, uh, think about this: a computer that you speak with, and she speaks back. So I said, I thought about it 20 seconds, and I said, yes, definitely, I want to work with this. So, and I had first uh, business uh, roles, uh, uh, technolo uh, technology roles, and then fast forward, uh, less than a year ago, I was offered the opportunity to become a public speaker full time. And I said, yeah, let's do this. So this is a place I want to innovate. But why am I showing you this book specifically? Because uh, uh, Sir Clark said uh, that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, and I l just love that phrase. This is the third law of Sir Clark. And uh, basically, the way that, uh, that uh, we believe uh, things are happening right now in, uh, in the world is uh, that, uh, that we are in the, the first days, we're in the cusp, but we're living the first phases of a new uh, revolutionary phase of the interaction between human beings and machines. The same way that uh, uh, all of these phases changed uh, the way that uh, we, we lived our life, we, we accessed information, we controlled our environment, we, we connected with each other, perhaps even uh, uh, talking with our mobiles uh, by sitting physically next to each other. This is going to change uh, as much as those other phases before are going to uh, change uh, uh, our lives. So voice user interface, uh, this is where we are right now. Now, at Amazon, and I personally believe that uh, this is going to be a big disruption. It's going to be a, a new set of opportunities. It is changing the way that uh, we interact with technology. And uh, uh, because uh, it's based on fundamentally one thing, that uh, we don't need to use, uh, we don't need to think uh, to use voice. Sometimes it's actually the opposite. We should think more about using voice, but that's a different story. The, the point is that uh, voice is natural. Most of us can use voice naturally. We don't have to think, we don't have to learn new skills to use our voice to interact with technology. And that is the basic paradigm here. So, and how is this possible? This is possible because uh, uh, we are seeing uh, uh, an enormous amount of, uh, of uh, uh, science uh, that is growing up. So now uh, there is actually, there is a missing uh, uh, graph here. So <laughs> I apologize, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, there is a hockey stick uh, uh, dramatic improvement and growth in the way that now we can have conversations uh, that are complex, that are natural with machines to go all the way up to, uh, to dinner reservation, to, to ask uh, specifically contextually aware uh, question, to have conversations that are they start to get more and more. But don't get me wrong. The thesis here is not that uh, we have uh, arrived at a level that is uh, comparable to, to the interactions that we do have with, with people, between people, right? Absolutely not. This is, uh, in Amazon, we like to say that this is day one because we are just at the beginning. We've been doing this for more than five years, so there is a ton of people working on this, uh, but it's just the beginning because the bar is super high. We, we know how to speak to each other. We are aware, very good in disambiguation, in understanding what is the real meaning behind words that could be meaning a, a, a lot of different things, 50 different meanings in one single word that could be, right? So the bar is super high. 
Now, here, Walt Mossberg in the last column uh, created or mentioned the ambient computing concept. By that, uh, we mean uh, the implementation of the vision um, of the Star Trek computer. So that, that, that's one of the things that I love a lot about Amazon. There's a lot of sci-fi references, so they're kind of good for people like me. So the idea here was uh, to being able to put in all houses uh, and cars uh, and offices uh, a computer and a computing entity that you can speak with without having to concentrate on a specific device. So you could simply walk around and have it and have it your way, right? So you talk with your room, you talk with your kitchen, you talk with your living room. And uh, uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do here. And that we have features like this one, it's called the ESP, the Echo Spatial Perception, where you have multiple echoes inside houses and we're starting to see that people are placing multiple, of this, multiple devices in their homes. And you walk around, but only the closest one to you will answer back. And that, that, that's a lot harder to explain than to actually live because you feel that you're talking to the room. These are the first steps toward a real ambient computing. Very, very important. But now, how do we expose this? So now let, I want to go into a little bit of a technical explanation on how we expose this to third parties to create these voices, these voice experiences. Um, we basically have two frameworks. One is called the Alexa Voice Service. This is how, this is that set of tools and uh, APIs uh, uh, and mechanism to take Alexa and to embed it into things. Let's say that you're a manufacturer of something, right? Uh, you're producing a fridge, a lamp, a car, uh, anything you want, uh, any appliance. As long as this thing, as a speaker, a microphone, and a connection, you can put Alexa in it. So the idea is that putting Alexa in everywhere so that uh, customers have the choice to interact with a computing entity with a, a cloud-based artificial intelligence from anywhere they want. Why should I not be able to have my first cup of coffee and just to consume uh, information, information that I want from a device on my fridge, for example, or attached to my wall or my car? Seemingly experience, right? So this is how we expose to this, Alexa voice service. On the other side, we have the Alexa skills kit. Alexa skills are the equivalent of voice-first apps for Alexa. You look for them into, uh, into a place, uh, into uh, an equivalent of an app store. Uh, you uh, choose uh, amongst a number of categories, more than 20, and then you enable them. Or you simply ask Alexa, Alexa, enable uh, the magic door. It's one of the, one of the games that I'm playing these days, one of the voice games. And Alexa said yes, uh, and that starts the magic door. But how do you create these things? So these things, these skills, these voice-first apps, uh, have a, a, a front end and a back end. Front end, uh, this is the equivalent of a graphical user interface, just that in this case is a voice user interface. This is an interaction model. This is a tree. This is a branching set of uh, uh, commands and possible interactions that you design for your human being user. And then there is a back end. There could be a number of ways. Now, everything here uh, starts with a human being, uh, a human a person utters a command, usually starting with a, a, a weak word. That could be Alexa, Echo, Amazon, or computer, obviously. And uh, the device listens for the presence for this wake-up uh, word. Until then, there is nothing that gets streamed on the cloud. But when the, uh, the wake word detector on board of these devices actually catches the word, there is a streaming, there is a visual feedback that is given to the user, a blue light, usually, and then there is a streaming that goes on the cloud where the audio is sent for analysis into different modules. Different modules such as automatic speech recognition, ASR, or natural language understanding, or natural language processing. So all of this has the purpose of extrapolating the intention, the intent, we call it, that is then passed to the back end. There is a processing that happens there, and then a response is sent back to a module called the text-to-speech uh, that, that basically converts this text into an audio that a human can understand. All of this, uh, if it's done right, produces the light. All of this is done in usually half a second. But because, let's remember, all of this has to be quick. What if I pause for like 10 seconds, right? You get super annoyed to say, this guy is weird. So same thing, right? <laughs> exactly the same concept. Think about a machine does that, say, yeah, right, whatever, and we disengage. Engaging natural experiences, that's all about this, right? Now, so 
This is a phrase that a friend of mine coined, uh, and it's very important when you design voice experiences, that eyes uh, expect uniformity. We like that most of the time. But then ears uh, want variety. So think about uh, when, once you get to create these voice experiences in creating uh, variety. Different prompts, uh, say, hi Max, how are you doing today? Or good morning Max, uh, how was your day going? Or anything, right? Create that variety so that uh, you have uh, an impression that uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is something waiting for you different and you don't know what it is. So we like that. We like that a lot from a human being point of view. So build that into your uh, skill, into your uh, capacity. Now, some of the things, uh, uh, now we're getting closer to the side uh, of, of my talk here uh, that, uh, that uh, tries to convey why and how these voice experiences are going to be very relevant for, for all of us, for human beings. And I'm trying to analyze uh, uh, two uh, sides of the spectrum of life, the young and the old. Because I see that in both these cases, in both these extremes of this semi-circle of life, uh, there is a, a very natural acceptance of these devices. As I mentioned, we have three kids in our house. They've been using uh, uh, Alexa-enabled devices, Echo devices specifically, for more than two years. First time I plugged one in, they didn't ask me if there was a little person inside that box. They didn't ask me, say, where is the, why, is the voice coming from? They started asking Frozen, they started asking jokes, so they started asking all the things that they wanted. They didn't worry, they just, it just made things for them. It just gave them what they want. And that was a very human, uh, unfiltered experience. On the other side of the spectrum, same way, we have, uh, uh, on, on, some, on some people, we have a, 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 an immediate uh, uh, clicking, an immediate connection with these devices. Um, maybe because they resemble radio that finally you can interact with, uh, meaning that uh, uh, some older people, and I know a lot of them, but some in my family, have been speaking with radios for a long time, a lot before their voice assistant, right? So just the radio didn't talk back the way that they wanted necessarily. So now it does. But uh, jokes apart, uh, there is, a, there, there is a, sometimes uh, this, this mechanism clicking very, very easily, even later on in life. Some of the things that we created here, we have things uh, um, like the Gadgets API. Uh, gadgets are connected devices, uh, and the first iterations of that uh, are uh, echo buttons. So think about in terms of uh, buttons that you can uh, uh, spread uh, amongst a team of friends uh, to play Trivial Pursuit, or Summon Says, and now it's called Summon Tap, or uh, games like uh, uh, Cowboy Duel, so my kids are, are crazy for that one, and a number of. You can build these experiences today. I'm telling you this because this is an API you can use today. In the UK, across the world, uh, in different models, if you speak Japanese, you can build on Alexa in Japan, or German, or a number of others, right? So that's the idea. You can build the things today. Now, there is a, uh, just to build on this idea, now we have recently launched in, uh, in uh, uh, Europe as well, the UK and Germany, as of two weeks ago, this is a concept of Alexa uh, skills for kids. <coughs> There are specific best practices and things that you should be doing and should be thinking when you create the voice experiences for the young ones. There are things like uh, uh, shorter prompts, uh, clear explanation of what's expected. So if you have a 20 second prompt uh, to a six years old, forget about it. It's not gonna engage, there is no way. She is not going to listen. She's not gonna remember probably what you just said the 15 seconds prior, right? So shorter prompts, uh, uh, feedback continuously of what is expected and so on. Uh, out of this, uh, all of these are uh, prize winners in competitions that we had in various categories for Alexa skills for kids. Um, just to pick one of them uh, out of a mold, kids court. Some of you have kids, uh, likely, and uh, you might be aware that sometimes kids do fight. Mind you fight pretty much 10 times a day in average. Kids uh, court uh, does uh, transform Alexa into a judge. <laughs> I love it. So this has been developed by Adva Levin, and uh, she's, a, she's a fantastic developer. She has three daughters, so I suspect that that was uh, kind of a hitting home, uh, literally. But the point is that uh, Judge Lexi, inside the skill, can arbitrate assigning roles to the kids uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, create a gamified experience to resolve the fighting. And I think this is brilliant. And uh, this skill specifically didn't win only for the idea, which is already a lot, but won because of the best practices, the way that uh, uh, used uh, positive reinforcement, right? So there, we recently launched something called the Magic Word that uses uh, positive reinforcement uh, to make sure that kids, uh, not to make sure, but to reward the kids that might want to say please or thank you to Alexa. Why not, right? 
Now, moving into the other spectrum. Uh, I, I, this is the first time I show this. This is uh, a friend of mine recorded this uh, uh, with his uh, uh, Dublin uh, grandmother. Uh, so this is Mora, and uh, I just selected these two uh, quick clips. Uh, just I wanted to show you how natural this is. At least they appeared extremely natural to me. Alexa, what day is this? It's Friday, May eleventh. Thank you. Play Raglan Road on Spotify. Resuming Spotify. I saw her first and knew that her I just love this because uh, this, uh, first of all, is extremely powerful. This is Mora. I picked Mora specifically for, to, to drive this point because uh, I was told by Alan once uh, that Mora is 94 currently, and in uh, Alan's word, uh, is, is, his grand, uh, is his grandson, is her grandson, uh, she skipped the mobile generation. She could not use a mobile device to save her life, right? So this is a very important point, but she can use a voice assistant. Some, something that some of us, uh, between youth uh, and, and old age, uh, sometimes might filter and say, wow, am I be able to use this? Why should I be able to use this? No, she clicked to use it right away because she simply used her voice. She didn't have to learn specific codes to use a device, pinching, clicking, closing, moving, something. No, voice, natural, right? So that is the point. And there is a huge amount of opportunities to create and to good. You can do good by building, uh, and there is a lot of startups that are building things today to keep people longer in their homes. Think about uh, making sure that you do have uh, things like uh, memory exercises or uh, early advisal of uh, uh, maybe asking if the door is closed 45 times a day that might indicate some other underlying issues, or being able to communicate with voice, or to close the door, or to close the blind, or to regulate the temperature. So you have a little bit, even, even if you extend of one day, just one little bit, somebody ability of remaining in their own house, I think we've done good, right? And you can build this exper these experiences today. There is a lot of that that is able to do. Now, uh, this is uh, what uh, I want to leave you with. Uh, you have to remember, start with people. This is about people and for people made by people. Technology is there, is ready to use, it can be leveraged today, but start with people. Start by drawing conversations. Get people to play your conversations. Here you will see the BBC team working out the conversation, the very intricate uh, interaction model to make sure that they worked. Because uh, if it works between people, you have a chance of doing something right. If it doesn't work between uh, uh, people, you know for sure that it's not gonna work between a person and a machine. With that, I thank you very much, uh, and I hope I interest you. Thank you, have a great day. Sure.